Intel has set aside trying to maximize CPU performance and now they're instead focusing on being more power efficient. Ditching the old naming scheme of i9-14900K, it's now Core Ultra 9-285K, Ultra 7-265K, and Ultra 5-245K. The 100S is exclusively for the laptop lines. Let's look at some of the comparison data between the Core Ultra series and the 14th gen. The CPUs have new performance and efficiency core architectures, and also they come with a new naming scheme. Previously, we had Raptor Cove and Gracemont, now we have Lion Cove and Skymont. Hyperthreading has been dropped, so now core counts and third counts are exactly the same. Its P core speeds have been lowered slightly, but this isn't a big downgrade. We'll get to that later. E cores have seen an increase to their max speeds with a standardized 4.6 GHz for all of them. Now, although the P core speeds have been decreased, both P and E cores have seen increases in their instructions per clock or IPC for short. Lion Cove sees an increased IPC of 9% versus Raptor Cove, and Skymont has an increase of 32% versus Gracemont, so multitasking is gonna be. With these spec changes, Intel claims that you can reach the same performance of the 13th and 14th gen with half the power usage. Now, this is great because less power usage means lower temperatures. Is Team Blue going green? By the way, this is the first desktop CPU with an NPU. Intel's NPUs are rated as 13 tops. Now, these are able to perform basic AI functions. For example, on your Zoom calls, when you need to blur your background or isolate your voice for noise suppression, if you can't get your kids to shut up, just pretend they're not there. Those AI functions can be offloaded the CPU onto the NPU for better quality and overall efficiency. These new CPUs will also require the new Z890 motherboard chipset, so say goodbye to DDR4 RAM because DDR5 is here to stay and now can be pushed well above 8000 mega transfers per second. I'm honestly quite happy to see these big changes in terms of power efficiency improvements in Intel CPUs, but are these changes enough to convince you to move to the 200S series? Let us know. Thanks for watching.